This week is all about how do you deal with hurt? And this morning, church hurt, church hurt. Well, you always hear it. You hear it here or there. You hear it with the person that just joined the church or the person that just, just left the church. I got hurt. Somebody did this to me. Somebody did that to me. And I got church hurt. Well, let me share with you on this morning. How do you deal with church hurt? My God, it's like it's pervasive and it's most definitely divisive. And it's something that is forever in the body of Christ. So this morning, this morning, let's deal with church hurt. But before we do that, I just want to uh, ask you, have you ever had church hurt? Good morning, Lena. Good morning, Pamela. Good morning, Joelle. Good morning, Anitra. Good morning, Thelma. How are you all on this morning? Have you ever had to deal with church hurt? What did you do when you dealt with it? What was it? What came out as a result of you having to deal with church hurt? How about that? That's what we're going to talk about now. We've been talking about hurt all week long. How do you handle? How do you manage? How do you overcome uh, all of the various things that come your way? We made it very clear earlier this week. There will be an offense. If you keep living, trust me, something or somebody is going to offend you. There will be an alt in King James Version of the language. So it's not a matter of, are you going to be offended? It is, what will you do when you are offended, when you are hurt? And this morning is all about church hurt. Five minutes or less, let me give you the text to talk and the takeaway. We're going to go to Jeremiah. We're going to go to Jeremiah, Jeremiah 20, 9 and 10. Jeremiah 20, 9 and 10. Let me first deal with the 10th verse, the 10th verse. I'm going to give you the text talking away, take away. Now, I want you to put in the chat area, put in the chat area, the revelation that you get so everybody can get the cumulative effect and then make sure you share this. What does this say? In the 10th verse of the 20th chapter, it says all of this. All my friends are waiting for me to slip. Felt that before? Been there before? What else does uh, Jeremiah say? We will prevail and take revenge on him. All my friends in the church. Now, we oftentimes, this is what we oftentimes read. We read Jeremiah 29. That's the one that gets us all fired up. But you need to find out what's really going on. But if I say I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, his word is in my heart like a fire, a fire shut up in my bones. Now, we love to preach that. We love to talk about that. But we fail to understand the context of the text. Jeremiah is a prophet of God. He's been called to prophesy to the church, to speak life into the church, to tell them you might as well succumb because of your behavior. Succumb to the Babylonian rule. You're going to be taken into captive, but it's not going to last forever. But you're going to have to stick it out and stick it through. And what happens is the uh, prophets in uh, uh, the nation were standing up and saying otherwise, telling the king, no, that's not going to happen. You're going to, y'all, y'all okay. Jeremiah said, not so much. And so the entire nation rises up against him, all of his friends. And for the lack of a better way to put it in context in today, the entire church came against him. And so Jeremiah was most definitely hurt by this. So what did he do? The first thing I want you to grab in terms of dealing with church hurt, looking through the lens of the life of Jeremiah, catch this. Children don't leave their parents because a sibling hurt them. <laughs> Let me say that one more time. Put it in the chat area now. Children don't leave their parents because a sibling hurt them. In the body of Christ, one of the first things that we do because a member in the church hurt you, you decide I'm going to leave the church. The, the, the spiritual father or mother or both that speak over your life, they're the ones that you are attached to. Jeremiah said, I'm not going to leave God. I'm not going to leave him because these folk hurt me. 
We make that decision so often, more than not. So-and-so hurt me. The choir member hurt me. The usher hurt me. The greeter hurt me. The deacon, whatever. I want you to grab a hold of something. If you look um, in the book of, of Joshua, if you will, you will find the story that before he did that, I, in fact, let me just do this right quick. I want to just get this word to you. First Samuel, I'm sorry. I said Joshua is actually First Samuel. In the book of First Samuel, you will find this wonderful story of now Elijah, uh, Eli, he's going, he's a prophet, he's prophesying. And what happens here? I want you to get this. I want you to grab it. Let's take a little time here. Uh, Holy Spirit speak. Hannah is praying, right? You remember she's praying in the temple? And the priest comes on her, Eli, the uh, first Samuel, the second chapter, she's praying. The first chapter she's praying, and then the second chapter we get the results. Now, what happens? The priest, Eli, says, you drunk. She's praying. He offends her to no end. Does she leave? No, Lord, I've not been drinking any wine or any strong drink. I'm just praying. She doesn't catch an attitude. The man insulted her. He insulted her. Come here. Come here. Let's go uh, to the New Testament. When Jesus insults the woman who comes and asks, can she have a piece of bread that falls from the master's table? Jesus says, that's for a dog. You're a dog. What does the woman do? She hangs in there. She hangs in there. She said, I ain't going nowhere. I'm going to get what I'm supposed to get. What happens so often in the body of Christ, you get church hurt, and then you want to make a beeline to the door. Trust me, you're just going to another church where you're going to get offended. No, you don't leave. A child doesn't leave the parent. That's the point I'm making. A child doesn't leave a parent because a sibling hurt them. The second thing I want you to grab is this. Jeremiah didn't stop living and preaching for God. Therein lies when he says, that's what he says, it's like fire shed up in my bones. I've been called to do this. I'm not going anywhere because it was God that called me, not these folk who hurt me. I'm preaching better than y'all responding right now. Here's the third thing I want you to grab a hold of. Jeremiah trusted God to get him through the difficult moment. In verse 12, he says this, you will take a revenge. You're going to take out revenge on them. I'm not worried about this. I'm committed to your cause. I'm committed to your cause because you're going to handle this. God, you got this. So in this world of church hurt, when we can look all through scripture, from Hannah, who was offended by the priest who said she was a drunk person in the church, didn't go nowhere, got her blessing from the very man that spoke that over her life. The woman, the Phoenician woman who says, you know what? I, I, you're a dog. That's what Jesus said. What else are you going to say? This is what Jesus said to the woman. She didn't go nowhere. She said, I'm going to get what I'm supposed to get. So what's your takeaway this morning? Your takeaway is just what Jeremiah said, the verse nine. This thing in my life, it's like fire and no church hurt can pour enough water on the fire in my life to put me out. The Lord be with you today. May his face shine upon you, give you peace. If you know somebody that's dealing with some church hurt, share this manner with them. I'll see you tomorrow morning with more morning manner as we continue dealing with hurt and how to handle it. God bless you. Bye now.